This play is based on the famous Gandhi march. Also known as the Seoul Satyagraha. The march was led by Mahatma Gandhi. Occurred between March and April 1930. The march was moved as an opposition and resentment to the British exploitative soul tax. The march was the first series of civil disobedience movement Gandhi himself envisaged. It was carried along the line of justice which Gandhi firmly reiterated. All events that developed as an immediate consequences to this march was primarily based on the principle of non-violence. The march garnered Gandhi with huge support from the people of India and also from people across the country. India provided its people with many gifts. One such gift was salt. It was a gift enjoyed by Indians with much ease and bliss. No such tax was imposed that would create a deplorable and burdensome condition for the people. However, all this changed with the British policy of salt monopoly. It came in the shape of salt tax. This policy of the British over assault became more severe with new laws, all this with the aim of raising revenue. The intensity of the salt tax escalated beyond what can be termed as normal. The British salt tax now became a widely criticized legality in India. As a result of these laws, the Indian populace was restricted from manufacturing and retailing salt independently. Salt became too expensive for the people, causing much problem for a simple life. On 5 February 1930, press report came that Gandhi would undertake civil disobedience movement in connection with the salt issue. Mahatma Gandhi, on 2nd March 1930, sends a letter to Lord Irwin, the Viceroy of India, with his 11 points. The Viceroy replied to Gandhi's letter. Ironically, his reply was negative. Gandhi, now dismayed, begins to devise a strategy for starting the movement. It was decided. Gandhi, along with a band of 78 members of Savarmati Ashram, men belonging to almost every region and religion of India, would march from Ahmedabad through the village of Gujarat to Dandi, 240 miles away on the sea coast, and break the law by manufacturing salt illegally and openly. Gandhi begins his march with his followers on 12 March 1930. Along the way, a journalist asks, Babu, is it all over? You have to erase now. They erase me. Thousand or ten thousand. It would not matter. It is the fight of every Indian. What if they don't wreck it all? The function of the civil resistance is to provoke response. They are not in control and we are. That is the state of civil resistance. Gandhi, with this aim clear, continues to march towards Gandhi. As he marched towards Gandhi, larger and larger crowd joined Gandhiji. Gandhi, though all, did not show any sign of weakness. Perhaps it was his aim that was guiding him. On the other hand, Sarojini Naidu, who heard about Gandhi, stood along the path and waited for the arrival of Gandhi. Gandhi, when he arrived where Naidu, along with her followers, 
they greet him and neither along with her followers join Gandhiji this march. The journey was long. However, Gandhiji did not give up. Finally, on 5th April 1930, they will reach the seashore. Gandhi took a lump of raw salt and said, As he needs ear and water, this sun came from the Indian Ocean, then every Indian has the right to plant it. With this, I am shaking the foundation of the British Empire, and I want my followers to do the same. This is the pattern of right against mine. While all this was happening, Lord Arwin, the Viceroy, was informed of all occurrences. My Lord, Your Excellency, the Indians are making salt everywhere. Possibly, most of them came down from the steamer, selling in the street of the lake. With the order of the Viceroy, the British soldier entered into the midst and began arresting. Many was arrested, but most importantly, the Congress leader were imprisoned. The continuity of reluctance from the British part over the constant demand of justice on the salt issue made Gandhi with much resentment and stern dissent, write a letter to Lord Irwin on May 4, 1930, where he explained his intention to raid the Darsana salt works. Irwin instead used this as a ground for Gandhi's arrest. On the night of May 4, 1930, Gandhi was arrested. The arrest of Gandhi did not stop the leaders of the civil disobedience movement from carrying its program. As a reaction to the arrest, a crowd led by Sarojini Naidu and Maulana Azad gathered at the entrance of the Darasana Salt Work, stood at the gate where the already informed British soldiers. Naidu turns to the crowd and tells them, We shall carry forward whatever Gandhi has started. We will not stop salt work under any circumstances. Long live Mahatma Gandhi! With that, the crowd moved towards the gate where the British soldiers were already in place. As the crowd moved forward, Azad comes forward and tells the crowd. Last night, at midnight, they took Gandhiji from us. They expect us to lose heart or to fight back. We will do neither. Jai Hen! And with that, the crowd slowly begins to move towards the British soldiers. As the crowd moves forward, the British soldiers begin to whip the Indians. In the midst of all this, neither to uphold the principle of non-violence tells the forwarding crowd. You must not use any violence under any circumstances. You will be beaten, but you must not resist. Not even raise a hand to defend from the blow. And with that, the crowd continues to move towards the British soldiers. The raid was a disastrous one. The scene saw many pain, many
many injured and many badly wounded. The British attempt to remove Gandhi from the scene to put an end to the civil disobedience movement did not work as envisaged. By the end of 1930, the British had realized that without conciliating the Congress, no settlement was possible. On 26 January 1931, the Viceroy announced the unconditional release of Gandhi and other members of Congress so that they could join in the Second Round Table Conference as directed by the British Prime Minister. Gandhi was released from the prison accordingly. Gandhi would then go home to meet Lord Arwen. I am aware my speech might have caused you lots of troubles and irritation, but I hope this will not stand in between us for what we are about to talk. Mr. Gandhi, I am directed to invite you to the second round table conference which is to be held in London. Okay, now I know, but I want all the arrested innocents to be free. Well, first put an end to the civil disobedience movement and come and join the second round table conference and then I will comply. I accept your excellency. After a great deal of correspondence between Gandhi and the Viceroy, with mediation from leaders, liberal leaders like Sapru and Jayakar, a pact was concluded on 5 March 1931, known as Gandhi Arrow Pact. This marked the suspension of the civil disobedience movement in India and all sorts of boycotting. More importantly, under this pact, Gandhi went to London to attend the Second Roundtable Conference, where, on the other hand, the British relaxed the legal control on the Indians. The Dandi March was one among many applaudable initiatives carried by Mahatma Gandhi throughout his lifetime as a nationalist freedom fighter. Not only did the march reiterate Gandhi's love in nonviolence as a principle, but his belief in the practicality of it. Perhaps it was all these events that made Gandhi's followers and disciples like Pandi Jawaharlal Nehru believe in such principle, which even today is prevalent. Not only as a mere principle, but as a cultural hallmark of India. We hope through this people will talk and discover for themselves the relevance of Gandhi in their lives. Thank you.